Help you? Detectives Phelps and Durrell, LAPD. We're inquiring into the deaths. Hand over the popcorn, numbskull, before we kick the door in. Which way you're going? Get that son of a bitch. I'm going. I'm gone. Hello everyone, it is the Almighty Jeff and this is episode 29 of LA Noir. For the past few episodes we've been working on collectibles and vehicles, we found all the landmarks and police badges, and drove around in all the four-door and sports cars. In the previous main story episode we finished the homicide desk by taking down the Black Dahlia murderer. Unfortunately our time with Rusty Galloway has come to an end, as we've been taken to the vice desk on the request of Roy Earl. Now, gotta be completely honest, this is not gonna be my blind playthrough of the first case of the vice desk because I completed it yesterday and there was an issue with the recording that uh, I was not aware of halfway through the video uh, it just stopped for some reason I don't know why so I have to do this again and hope for the best that it actually works this time thankfully uh, not to bust anyone's bubble too soon it's it's an interesting case I'll go that far but it's not anything like oh my god massive like plot twist kind of thing if you get me. So I'm going to be replaying the Black Caesar today. Um, well yeah, like I said it's interesting, but it just means that um, there might be less speculating I suppose. I'll try and, I'll try and play into the mood of detecting and obviously not spoil anything and stuff like that. But I'm being straight up honest. In fact, this isn't the Phelps. Welcome to Vice. This time doing this. This is your new partner, Roy Earl. Take a seat. A special request was made to transfer you to add Vice. It was cheaper, doesn't it? We need a man with your kind of starch on this desk, son. We have two dead Negroes found in an apartment this morning on Yucca Street. Number 6358, apartment 5. We got better things to be doing than wasting our time on two dead junkies. Did I ask your opinion, <laughs> detective? Two men dead on U.S. Army issue morphine. That makes it an advice case. Beat it. Yes, sir. I love it. I love you, boss. I don't know what his name is, but I love it. See, what I don't love is Royal. You could say that. We used to be partners. So, you're working with the big boys now, Cole? I guess so, Roy. I thought homicide was the primo assignment. That may be the case. I asked for you personally, Phelps. I had to pull a few strings to get you over to advice. How does it feel? The lieutenant seems to think I'm doing okay. Okay? <laughs> Don't get humble on me, Phelps. You're doing great. You're the department pinup boy. War hero and crime fighter. What a combination. I can assure you I'm no war hero, detective. Okay. Interesting uh, element. So, I mean... Nice car, Roy. Is that department issue? No, this is my sled. You can't be seen slumming it in a gnash if you're in vice call. Meanwhile, we got needle freaks kissing it goodbye all over Central Avenue. Uh, so, what I was going to say is usually our relationships with our partner start off a little bit frosty. With the case of, like, Stefan and Rusty. But we grew to sort of love them and develop a sort of mutual respect over the course of the case. However, we've already had uh, a couple of previous encounters with Roy, and he's been a bit of an asshat. Both of us, I think it's twice we've met him. Who in God's name would eat at that hobble? Um. So yeah, we'll have to see if our relationship improves. I don't know. Also, the music on this case is really sleuthy. I love it. <laughs> it's up the stairs, detectives. Oh, Hidoki. Last door on the left. Let's do it. Come on, done. Your show now. Okay, thank you. Carruthers, my homeboy. I've been reassigned to advice. What have we got? Two stiffs, overdosed, been dead a couple of days. Government issued morphine. We use the same syrettes in Okinawa. 
Fucking Negro junkies can't take supply this pure. You know these guys? I know of them. The younger one's a two-bit horn player by the name of Cornell Tyree. The other one works in distribution. Started using a little too much of his own product and Jack D took exception. He wasn't born that ugly. His name's Lamont. Tyrone Lamont. <clears throat> so who's supplying the drugs? That's easy. Whoever knocked off the wharves in San Pedro. Jack Dragna, Mickey Cohen. Dope's been all upside down ever since Jimmy Utley started the long walk at Quentin. You talk about it like it's a system. It was a system. But those days are long gone. We are supposed to uphold the law. Yeah, and we do. But we can't change people. The truth is, everyone wants a license to get a little dirty now and then. Our job is to keep it manageable. That's how you see it? See it any other way, and you better forget about being a vice cop. Can we get on with this today, preferably? <laughs> yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? Alright, let's have a look at, um... Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Took his jolt and drifted off. And I suppose his friend wasn't in any condition to notice that he had stopped breathing. Hmm. It's tragic, isn't it? Such a waste of life. Oh, that is enough to knock you out for combat trauma. Two of them will stop your heart. Okay. What have we got here? Terry Connell. They say only the good die young. I hope it was true in your it's case. All the good ones, fellas. Hmm. JJ always listens to 275FM. Who is JJ? And why do these two care about his taste in music? <laughs> there might be something a little bit more to that, Cole. These clowns lived on top point? Must have been messy eaters. It's all over the floor. Mm -hmm. Looks like it was always going to end this way. Okay, I think that was everything with that guy. Never the same, money. Okay. Again, that happened to be the first time the money uh, glitched through the wallet. Tyrone Lamont, not even 23 years old. Younger than me. So it always hits. 746. Small chance in life is probably better than no chance. Find anything interesting? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> and again. Right. Look like a fever. From a joint across the sea. E. That's the case name. <gasps> Looks like something hmm. was taped to the bottom of the cup. I wonder. Couldn't be US Army issue morphine, could it? Perhaps. That's all the good ones, The key. Terry Bell win. Some kind of fruit, a bell, and win. Strange doodle. Hmm. All in my head. I wonder what's the correlation between love of the needle and love of the music. Hmm. Interesting indeed. Another special order from the Caesar. Mm. Another used one. Okay. Oh, that's like a syringe. Street life have no idea how dangerous this stuff is. Mm. Another used one. I guess I suppose that's what this syringe on the floor was from. for an empty cup. Oh, let's take a look at the bottom. Ah, oh, look at that. Morphine. Fix right over the counter in broad daylight. The emperor across the street appears to shift a lot of popcorn. Let's shake him down. Okay, one second. Hmm. A musical instrument. Okay. I think the rest are just other um, empty 
Alarm Cops. Just want to check we've got everything. Let's have a look at our clues. I know the music stops, but that doesn't always mean we've got everything sometimes. Uh, so we have popcorn cuts with morphine. We've got morphine serrets. We've got the strange doodle. We've got the popcorn cups. I think that's just updated with the one with morphine. The number slip and the radio station note. So yeah, should be good. Right, well, let's go... Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and head to the distributor at Black Caesar, which we just drove past as we were um, entering. I think actually Roy commented on it looking like a dive. But uh, it seems the, the popcorn is to die for. Dehe. <laughs> Sorry, it's terrible. It's right just across the road, but I. Right. Let's wrap this up before I actually have to work overtime instead of just claiming for it. <laughs> You're a true inspiration to us all, Roy. <laughs> yeah, I remember there was a little bit of conversation there, so. Black Caesar Food Hut, 7.38 a.m. Help you? Detectives Phelps and Durrell, LAPD. We're inquiring into the oh, deaths. Hand over the popcorn, numbskull, before we kick the door in. But you're going. Get that son of a bitch. I'm going. I'm gone. Groovy. Stay on him. Don't you beat me. I'm a detective. I'm on the case. Someone's going heavy on the sex of my phone. Come in, bitch. I'm gonna air assassinate you. Whoa. Okay, got the corner here. Ah. Oh. I wonder if you could actually tackle him there. Because this is what happened to me last time. We ended up getting to this scrap on the roof. And he still made that scream again. Me, you gotta help me out. What the hell going on here? Morgan! That's you? You picked the wrong mm. cop, you fucking animals. It seems like we could have actually tackled him there, unless that was just a uh, false sense of security, but I imagine we'd, we wouldn't be able to get into this fight with uh, his buddy if. Um, hey, I thought I'd finish you. Ooh, ooh! There you go, Mortal Kombat, this bitch. What's your name? Morgan. Half an answer is no answer to me, asshole. Fleetwood Morgan. Keep an eye on him, Roy, while I take a look around. Don't happen to know Frank, do you? I've busted his chops a couple of times. Stay still, Fleetwood. Don't give me an excuse to shoot you. Ugh. I was a criminal, but. Still don't like you, Roy. Being an arsehole for the sake of it. Oh well. Looks like we got ourselves some morphine. Morphine. Might not be filling, but I'm sure it's satisfying. Hmm. Okay, what was the other thing again? Ah, the briefcase. Ah, yes. Number slips might affect your tone, Fleetwood. Otties. And the blue room. Should be stamped on the reverse by the issuer. Okay, let's have a look. Issued by Jermaine Jones, booking agent. Morgan can give us something on this Jones character. Jones. Mrs. Mrs. Jones. All right, we're done. About time we heard what Fleetwood here has to say, Cole. Talk to uh, we're inquiring about the Fleetwood Mac. We're in an apartment across the street, Fleetwood. We want answers. Of course. I'll do my best, mister. 
Okay, morphine overdose victims. You sold the drugs to Cornell Tyree and Tyrone Lamont. Oh, I sell, I, I sell fried steaks and, 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 and black eyed peas. <laughs> Come on, dude, you're not even trying, are you? You're lying, Fleetwood. We know that you supplied them. I don't know nothing about no drugs. All I do is my ten hair flipping burgers. Can you prove any different? Well, the fact that um, there was some popcorn cups with some morphine. Flipping burgers and strapping it. jolts of morphine the crime the scene. popcorn cups, Fleetwood. Now I want the truth. Who supplies the drugs? A cat by the name of Armstrong Edwards. Right, he brings the stuff around about once a day. I know Armstrong. He's a two bound, strictly small time. Who's he working for, Fleetwood? Jermaine Jones. Jermaine Jones. We have you for the hop and resisting arrest. Tell us about the numbers if you want our help. Look, the numbers are the white man's tax on poor folk. All right, now, now what else you want to know? I think this one's bad cop, if I remember. It is indeed. We have an address on the slips. We're going to go down there now and rat you out, Fleetwood. Tell whoever it is that you rolled over and gave them up. No, 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 no. Look, I've been cooperative, okay? Now you got to help me some. Fleetwood, I'm going to speak personally to the judge on your behalf. A name, Fleetwood. Look, he's, he's a real slick dude. Wears a hat and swings a cane. Goes by the name of Murray. All right, I ain't got a last name. See you at the station, Fleetwood. But you're going to help me, right? Of course, kid. You helped us out. We always like to repay a favor. <sighs> Fleetwood gets a nice cell, Wallace. One with a window and a nice fresh pillow. Oh, sounds a lot so smug, isn't he? Oh yeah, we gotta uh, gotta make a call. We can reach the reach the booth. That'd be nice. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge twelve forty seven. How can I help, detective? I need an address on a Jermaine Jones musical booking agency. Just a moment, detective. Jermaine Jones. The office is listed as 5528 Santa Monica Boulevard. Thanks for your help. Oh my god, thank you ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alright, I think we are going to Mr. Mr. Jones. Beep beep mother trucker. I didn't do that. It wasn't me. I heard you were in the blue room the other night. Shouldn't you have been at home? Tucked in bed with the wife and kids? Where I go is your business. It couldn't have had anything to do with a certain delightful but damaged German girl, could it? I don't know what you're talking about, Roy. Uh -oh, I'm suspecting some, some tension. Who? Marlon Hopgood. Your informer. He was my corroborating witness in the Bishop case. Oh, right. Marlon. You're not still sore about that, are you? You made the case without him. He was an accessory to the abuse of the girl, Roy. As long as Hollywood exists, it's going to be chewing up starry-eyed little girls. Marlon was small time. You caught the big fish. And look how much good it did your career. Not always about that, Roy. But okay. Oh, Scheiser. Why did you give me the keys to your car? You asshat. <laughs> you wanted me to take care, you should drive your own bloody vehicle. Yeah, hmm. So, the blue room, that's, um, it's coming up again. We've seen it a couple of times crop up across the game now, and that's two mentions of it. In this uh, in this case so far, with the ticket and uh, Roy bringing it up, so I'm not sure if that's gonna have a, a part. Of... Ooh! I was hoping that it would take me into a uh, lady. Get in the way. Take me into like the the cutscene then. I guess I wasn't uh, close enough. Well, it's not cost me a star. That'd be awkward. I mean, I've already got five stars on the case anyway from doing it the first time, but I'd like to do it on camera. Look at this place. I'm guessing not much talent comes out of this talent agency. No, do, 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 do. Go back, go back, go back. 
Here we are, Jermaine Jones, 238. Don't know if it counts as a clue, but, um, let me say, I'm sorry. Who let you in? Me, hey, I'm my seven. Jermaine Jones. Don't bother getting up. Your flunky Fleetwood Morgan just snitched you out. I wasn't planning to. Now you think you can tell me who the hell you are? LAPD. We'd like to take a look around. The hell you will, motherfucker. You carrying a warrant? No, do we need one? <laughs> Search the place, Cole. Okay. What do you think you're gonna find, policeman? Huh? Scott Phantom? Fine radio. Shortwave, AM and FM. My father has a Scott. Okay. You ain't allowed to do this. I got rights. So this is where the um, the radio the station clue comes in. Uh, which one was it? Radio station notes. Okay, JJ always listens to two seventy five FM. So there you go. Let's have a look. See. So first of all, let's turn to FM. Turn the volume up a little bit. Two seventy five. Oh, ah, well, would you look at that? Seems you've got something rather illegal happening in there, Jermaine Jones. Get over here. Take these assholes apart. You heard the boss. This isn't going to end well for you, gentlemen. I wouldn't recommend it. Is this the best you got? These mugs are dope for the eyeballs. Clean them up quick, boys. I ain't got time for this. Ooh. Come on, come on. Beat these sons hey, of bitches. That was easy. Sit tight, asshole. Pretend you're at the parlor getting your nails done. Cole, you better search through that stuff in the radio before you brace our friends here. Hmm. I think I will. And we got some money. But a Tahiti trip. How many starving musicians pay with perfect five thousand dollary dues? Okay. Another morphine syringe. This must be how those two bum standing guard take their wages. But I says another ticket for Otties. Your friend Fleetwood was also a betting man, Jermaine. Got some of the marijuana's for felony possession. I'm thinking intent to supply. And we've got ourselves a sticker here. The Ramez Removals. Ramez Removals. They must have taken special care delivering this for you. Okay, I think we're, we're just about done here. Let's go have a word with Mr. Jones. Dead. At a stretch, the DA could have you on felony murder for supplying stolen government... Tyrone and Cornell are dead. They're on a slab downtown with the ME examining their last meal. Popcorn washed down with morphine. Are you offering me a deal? I have a pet judge who hates blacks. He'll give you 50 years for your two buddies. Another 30 for stealing from Uncle Sam. You'll be out by the time you're 110. Imagine the changes you'll see. I get the message. How much is this going to cost me? Okay, I'm a surplus morphine. Who supplies the morphine? I don't know nothing about that. Hmm. I think you and your cronies are responsible for the theft from the wharves. If you want to save your skin, stop lying to us, Jones. So, I look like some kind of criminal genius to you. That what you're saying, motherfucker? Prove that I was in San Pedro and that I stole that shit. Uh, I might have chosen the wrong option. Looks like I was mistaken. I think this is bad cop. So we make you for all of it. You're the fall guy from Mickey Cohen. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a colored man. You see any Jew boys running around here? I collect my cut. Lenny the Fink controls the action. Lenny the Lenny Fink. Who? Lenny Finkelstein, Mickey's dipshit brother-in-law. What is the link between the morphine and the numbers slips? There is no link. You're wasting your time here. Okay, now this one's the lie. You're lying to me, Jones. Tell me about Merlin. Who? 
I don't know anyone named Merlin. Hmm. Fleetwood Morgan will testify that you and Merlin are expanding out of illegal gambling and into drugs. Okay. So I buy from a cat goes by the name of Merlin Adi. Merlin runs the lottery for the Dew Boy. I think has a new line in drugs. You squeal me out, I deny ever telling. Tell us about Adi. Adi's a gambler. Fronts points on football games, fights, the horses, numbers, chicken crossing the road. <clears throat> Motherfucker will take the odds on anything. Motherfucker. What's the score with Rem as removals? I brought a radio from there. That's all. Hmm. So, so. We visit Rem as removals and tell them that we want a special bookcase or wardrobe to hide our dope in. They're going to be copacetic. And when we tell them their good friend Jermaine sent us and said they could do a nice deal for the LAPD. I could use an act like you too. Those fucks Abbott and Costello are on the sly. Hollywood could use another couple of deeply unfunny white bread humps like you. <laughs> Very good, Jermaine. You have character. Now cough it up. Ramez is a good friend of Lenny the Fink. You getting the picture? Take them all in. We have a deal, right? We're after the morphine. I'll speak to the DA on your behalf. You have my word. Hmm. This is getting rather interesting. We have to talk to this Lenny the Fink. We've got Ossie. We've got Remez removals. The clues just keep stacking. All right, we need to make a call. Cole Phelps, batch 1247. How could I help, Detective? How can I help, Detective? I for Ramez removals. That's Ramez. R-A-M-E-Z. Just checking. Ramez removals. Corner Sunset and Wilton. Owned by a Jose Victor Ramez. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Candley. Right. So next we're going to head to the numbers. So Mickey Cohen or Jack Dragna stole the army's surplus wharf, and they are selling it on the streets? Looks that way. But the mob wants returned customers, not corpses. Why haven't they cut the morphine? Good question, detective. This robbery happened months ago, right? The beginning of the year. So why are the proceeds suddenly turning up now? Another good question. But where does it get us? It's like asking questions in the middle of the movie. If you just sit tight and keep your yap shut, you'll find out what happens. <laughs> we need to follow the evidence. 